Hey, everybody. I see people coming on in. This girl in my office is very loud, and I can only hear her talk when she talks because she has like a presence about her, and she's outside the door talking right now. So I'm like, I gotta shut this. Um, okay, we got 40 people here. We are five past, so let's get this party started. Um, let's see. All right, you should all be able to see my screen, and should all be able to see the Action Network. Um, we are here in the main page for the High School Democrats account. Um, I'm going to use theirs as the sample to show you everything. Um, but you also have state accounts, many of you, and I know I still owe some of y'all state accounts. I'm sorry. Um, work's been a little hectic this week, too, because primaries. Um, but follow along if you can, and if not, just take notes, and we'll get you handled. Um, so... Over here, Action Network is kind of the overall catch-all for all of the data moving forward for HSDA. So it's a toolkit designed for progressives. It is um, a fantastic organization, and they help groups like the AFL-CIO and now High School Democrats and plenty of us um, keep our, our ducks in a row, so to say. So within the Action Network, everybody is um, identified by a unique email address. So if you have like an HS Dems account and then a Gmail account and then a school email, and you sign up or take action with each of those three different emails at some point, you will get added to the list for each of those records. Um, so you have each person may exist multiple times through different emails, but generally speaking, if you have one email, like if my B Clayton at HSDEMS is in the system and then I update my phone number or update my address, it will continually update that record each time I communicate with it. So you should usually have the latest data on the people in your organization if they're participating. Um, there are two main um, ways to use Action Network in terms of um, two large tools. One of those is the actions category. Um, so these are things that we used all of this if you voted in the elections and there were 1,491 people that filled this form out. Um, this is just a basic form. So it's going to look like this. You all saw it. You just fill out the form. It gives you information and you submit. Um, there's also other kinds of forms that um, you can do a petition or you can do an event or um, letter campaign or fundraiser, that sort of thing. Um, and that's just a different way that you can work with people and get people to take action with your, your chapter, your organization. So let's say we want to do an event. We have a chapter meeting coming up and we want people to RSVP. All you have to do is click create event and then just fill this out. It walks you right through it. So we're going to call this sample meeting um, and then it's going to be on the 9th at 3 o'clock, and it will um, do it in your time zone. Um, and then location name, this is going to be virtual. So we can also do, usually wait it, yeah, no physical location. So you can just mark that off and then add in your host contact information and then join us for a sample meeting. If you want to add an image to it, you do that right there. And then this is all the fields that you're going to get from your attendees. So when they RSVP, usually if it's something like just an event form where it's just a quick info grab, so you have a head count, don't ask for a whole bunch of things because it's going to make it complicated and nobody wants to fill out a 500 um, question form to just like go to a meeting. Um, so just like a quick form like this is probably sufficient for that. Um, but say you want to do like, you know, a form for elections so that, um, you know, you can know who's running for office, how all you have to do to do that if you need more information is just go to edit form and then you'll see a bunch of pre-built questions that we've already built here. 
Um, many of them were when we were going to use this for summit, um, for summit registration. Um, but let's say you want to have pronouns on this form because that's important. Um, you can just drop it in right here and then click it and make it a required field or always show it um, and click save. And then so if you click always show, that means if somebody is an Action Network user and they've already taken action with you, Action Network will remember them. So when they come back, it'll say like, welcome back, Beth. And then it'll ask them any other questions that Action Network doesn't have the answer for. Um, so something like pronouns, if somebody maybe has once provided you pronouns, um, maybe at the beginning of high school, but then since high school, now they want to use different pronouns because, you know, things have changed a little bit. Um, they have the opportunity to update that. Whereas if you don't um, say always include it, they'll have to ask to have that manually changed because Action Network will think it already knows the answer. Um, so we're just going to save this like here and save form. If you ever need to add questions, one last thing here, that aren't pre-built, do not, the blank questions, do not use it. It's so bad, it breaks, don't use it. Um, we're gonna create those questions always so that they're pre-built before they go into the form. The blank questions are just problematic. They're difficult problem children in this software. Um, where did I go? Okay. I got it and just completely screwed this up. Okay. And we are good. So we're going to then just save and go to the next step. Um, if you do want to create those extra questions and they're not already pre-built, you can go to start organizing and questions and custom fields. And then it'll allow you to build those questions out um, just like you would in like a Google form question. And then once you save and then open your form, they'll appear in the drop down in the list of questions you can add. Um, and if you ever create a question and then decide like, ooh, I don't like the way that looks, if you edit it in the questions and custom fields section, it will automatically update it on all your live forms too. So, okay. Um, so you just save and go to the next step. And then it will give you the thank you page right here. So you can just edit this if you want to make it a little more, um, a little more appropriate for whatever you're doing. And then we're gonna go specific on that goal. Remember, we like our smart goals. And then instructions for your attendees. So if there's a specific place people need to park or if they need to like bring something, like if you're doing a canned food drive, remind them to bring a can of food, something like that, um, you can put that right there. Um, and then you also, there's a discussion board on each event, um, and you can turn it on or off. Um, and then when you're ready and you like what you've got, let's say, um, save and publish. Um, um, so then once you've saved your event and it's live, you can view it right here. View that. And that's what it's going to look like. This is not very exciting because we didn't put much effort into it. Um, we didn't add any pictures. We didn't really add a description. But see here, it thinks it knows all the answers about me. So all I have to do if, it, if I've already participated is just click send RSVP. I'm done. That's it. Um, so it's really important, too, that you optimize. Um, all of these things on your event too, because when you create it, it's going to automatically create an RSVP list. And it thinks I live in Caroline's hometown because um, this is an example of how um, data can cross contaminate where I forwarded an email to Caroline that had an Action Network link in it. And then Caroline filled it out. And so it changed my name to Caroline Harding at bclaytonhsms.org and um, I added in all of her information when she filled it out and it overwrote mine. So um, anytime you do send out a link to what you're doing, make sure you use this direct link because if you send out, we'll get into this in a second, if you put an action into an email, it will automatically reference that record because it thinks it knows who's opening the link because it thinks it knows who opened the email. So always if you're sending one of these out or posting it on Facebook, 
Don't take the one out of the email that you received in your inbox because it'll confuse it. Just take your direct link right here and share that on social or use the sharing tools that it provides you. So you can see who's RSVP'd, download your reports here, or you can generate a report that has like segmented data. If you wanna see who's RSVP'd like in the past week or something like that, you can do that right there. Um, the discussion board, I always just turn it off because it's not particularly helpful all the time. Um, but you may want to leave it on depending on if there's any kind of like on the ground planning that has to happen. And then info, just make sure that's correct. Sponsors, we've already, HSDA is already a sponsor of this event, but say we're doing an event in coordination with the state chapter. Now I can add, um, who wants to be our state chapter? Who's doing something? Let's do Utah. I think y'all have one. Bang, there y'all are. And I can add y'all in as a co-host. And now y'all are a sponsor of this organization. They'll see, they'll see that um, in their thing. So if they're not on this training, they're gonna wonder what in the world's going on. Um, then your responses. So as soon as somebody submits the form, remember it takes us that big green screen and we change it, say like, thank you for submitting your RSVP. Um, you can also change that to like a fundraising page. So if it's, you know, you want somebody to sign up as a member or something and you want them to then like make a donation or if it's an alumni push for something like to get people to update their information, um, you may want it to redirect to a fundraiser. Um, so you can do that there or you can just redirect it back to your main page, um, whatever you want. So if you want to use a redirect, you can do that right there. Um, and if there's a certain number of people that can come, you can redirect people to like go, whoops, we're sorry, we've hit our maximum number of attendees link right there. Um, every time somebody submits the form, they're also gonna get an email. And it's this basic shell, it does all of this for you. Um, and you can just go in if you want to like spruce it up or add in anything else to it. But generally you wanna just kind of take a look at this and make sure that it looks right. And then it will also send an email reminder 24 hours before the event um, by itself. You don't have to do anything to do that reminder email. So no having to like remember to go in and like, oh my goodness, event in two hours, I forgot to remind you. Um, it'll automatically do this, just a quick reminder. You can update the subject, update the sender if you want it to be from a specific person. Um, and then always just change it from your host to like team HSDA or something just a little more personal on that one. Um, and then just save your responses. Um, then there's also sharing and tracking. So Facebook, um, you know how when you put a link into Facebook, you have like your pull content, right? Like, so you have the um, like title, big bold title, whatever the link is, the page title, and then that little description blurb underneath it. That's what this is. So we wouldn't want this to say sample event. And sometimes it like doesn't quite look right for Facebook. So think about this, like how you want it to actually look when you post it on Facebook. Um, and then just update your title and update your description. And then if you want it to pull an image, if you don't add one, it will just pull the Action Network logo and that's not particularly the branding that we wanna push. Um, so I would always do like a 1200 by 628 Canva graphic and just throw a pretty simple graphic up in there. If nothing else, like just put your logo in there so that there's something brand. Now, it also will automatically populate your tweet. Um, it doesn't post this for you, but this is what when somebody gets, when somebody submits it, it says like, now will you take the next step and share? This is what it's asking you, like this is what happens when you click that tweet button. Um, or if they get the email that says, now will you invite your friends? This is what they get if they click on Twitter. So this is the sample tweet. Um, I always just take out their plug and add in ours because we want to give ourselves that that shout out. Um, and then hashtag it HSCA summit and we're ready to go. And then this is the, can you email, can you come if they click the like forward this email to a friend button? Um, this is just gonna say I'm attending an event called sample event. That's terrible. I'm attending the sample event. Join us for an exciting event. Can you join me? Click here it pretty much does it for you. You just want to kind of go through and like wordsmith a little bit because not everything we do fits into those algorithms. Um, and if you're really getting in the weeds with like Google ads and Facebook pixels, one can work for us and two, um, 
that's how you do that right there. You just click save. And the Twitter um, image card for Twitter will pull from whatever you put on Facebook too. So once you've done that, you're good to go um, and you have a link. So we can just copy this link right here and go over to the email section. All the forms work pretty much the same way, whether it's an event or a form or a petition or whatever. It's a lot of just like follow the steps um, and answer the questions it's asking you. Um, each of them kind of has their own like weird little nuances, but largely speaking, as long as you are building your questions before you get to the action and not using that build them here tool that I told you was terrible, um, as long as you're building them first and as long as you are optimizing and updating your responses and sharing sections, you really can't screw it up too bad. So we've got our link, I've copied it. We're gonna go home right here. And now let's send an email because the next thing we wanna do is tell people that we're having our sample event. Um, so here's all the ones that we've sent for, um, you know, the election so far, all those that y'all received. And we um, have, so if we wanna send a new email, all we have to do is click email. And it's gonna just ask us what we wanna do. So what's our subject? Can you join us um, from this? Reply to the Clayton. You can also set up like a throwaway Gmail so that you don't get like trolls yelling at you all the time. Um, that is a perfectly acceptable thing to do right here is just set up like, you know, hsdems at gmail.com and just use that as your um, throwaway. But um, that's up to you depending on how nice your list is. And then this is going to be like, you know how in your inbox you see the subject and then you see like the few lines of text next? This is that. So if you want to customize it, it's right there. Um, you also want to update your wrappers. So um, we did on the Chinese Messenger actually draw how to create a wrapper, but the thing you need to know is that this is just your branding on the email. This is where you put that HSDA logo at the top and make it pretty. And then this is the body of your email. So it's pretty much just what you see is what you get, editor. Um, if you want to do it in HTML because you are a badass and want to show off, you can do it right there in HTML. Um, sometimes you, it'll get a little wonky and it'll add like a div tag if you've copied and pasted something. So you may need to just go in and like check that code and clean it up if you're having trouble with something. Um, but you absolutely don't have to know how to do that. Um, you can also use some basic formatting layouts here. Um, change your alignment, bold italics right through. Why we have strike through and not underline, like the world will never know. Um, I don't have an answer for that. Um, you can add a list, you can add an image, just choose a file and save. Um, and if you do decide to use an image, I would definitely, um, that's all fun stuff, definitely recommend doing like, let's use our over one. Add it in here and then you have the ability once you click on it to do title and alternate text. And that's helpful for people if they're using a reader because um, they're visually impaired. So that will help that um, process the image. Um, like that. Um, and then if we want to link, linking our pictures is always a solid um, option. And then I just like take out the source code here for direct link because the email is going to add its own source code. So everything right here before the question mark, that's your actual link. Um, and then open in a new tab, center that image. And then this way, this picture is 406 pixels wide. That's a really good size for an email. Usually you want it to be no larger than 600. If it gets to be more than 600, it like, y'all gotten those emails where it like blows up your inbox and the picture's like this big and you don't know why it's taking over your life. Um, so this keeps it from doing that. So I just check the width, make sure it's somewhere between 400 and 600. It's going to show as like a good, like readable width image and then click save. And now it was in here. Um, so then you can also add a table. If you need to add a table, those get kind of wonky just because email clients read them differently. Um, add a line and clips. So clips are what you'll probably need the most. And that's where it just like personalizes the email. Um, and then you just type your body. No, I deleted Oprah. The undo button works on this too. 
What day do we start to do this? The ninth. Now I'm gonna highlight this text and just link it. Bump. And you're good. Um, we're gonna add Oprah again, and then we're gonna just add another little text down here. We can't wait to see you for taking action. You rock. King HSDA. Okay, so this usually drives me batty, and I'll show you an example of like why I say you may need to go in and edit HTML. This is a perfectly fine email as it is, but if you notice, you have this weird padding between this line and the picture, and then you have no padding between this line and the picture, and that drives me nuts. So I always just check the HTML here, and each section has a paragraph tag, um, and just check and make sure, see what it's doing is trying to put that bottom text into the same paragraph as our picture. So we're just gonna end it, start a new one, and now we're good. And now we have space. Um, like I said, if you don't know HTML, it's not a big deal. You're good, it would go out just fine the way it was. Um, but if you're like kind of a weird nerd like me, that will make you feel better. Um, and then when you're ready, you can save and preview it, see what it looks like. This is what the email is gonna hit inboxes. Um, and it looks right. Always check your links, make sure your links work. Our links take us to where we wanna go. That's fantastic. So we're good. Okay. And you can also preview it as a specific person. So if you're doing something different with targeting, I can preview it as like Miriam in theory. Um, who else has an interest in email? Yeah, it should do it. Um, okay, close that and then just save and target. Okay, so the targeting is a little kind of weird, but once you get the hang of it, you're in business. Um, so you can narrow down your data. Everything on the left salt column is include, and everything on the right column is exclude. So if we're doing an event, it makes the most sense to target people living within like 25 miles of a certain zip code. And that would be, oh, I think it tried to submit it. Um, or if you want to send your full list, just leave it completely blank. Um, like leave everything, all the targeting blank, and it'll default send your whole list. Um, you can also choose to target by legislative district. They're all in here. Um, I'm 28, if you're interested. Um, you can target that way, and each thing that you put on the left side is additive. So if you want to target people in multiple districts, like we're going to hit all of South Alabama real quick. Um, that all adds together. So it's 100 and 101 and 102 and 103. Um, but if you remove it on this side and exclude it, it will exclude people who are in this one or in that one or in that one. So because a lot of these things, it won't exclude it in an additive way. And that's like a weird logic thing. We can get on that rabbit hole later. Um, but for what you're gonna need to, know, need to know mostly, you can narrow it down to your county, you can narrow it to your state, you can narrow it to your country, if that's the thing you want to do. Um, target by zip code, target by city, target by how close they are to your actual campaign. Um, all of these things, really the ones that matter are those zip code targeting, legislative district targeting, and um, actions. So if somebody's, say they've already RSVP'd to this event and there's an update, we can only send it to people who have RSVP'd just by doing that. Um, and that gives a pretty easy way to do that. Um, you can also send up people who only received a different email. So if somebody um, received, let's say this one from high school Dem, from Dems Abroad, we can only target those particular people. So you can kind of get, get fun with it. Um, and then if you want to really get into optimizing your email sends, you can target people who opened a certain email but maybe didn't convert on that ask. Or you can exclude people who opened a certain email to make sure that they're actually like getting it don't like spam people because that's not nice. Um, but generally that's 
how that works. Um, you can target donors, which we don't have the donor data in there, so that's not particularly helpful. Um, but basically what you need to know, you can do it by tag. Um, we want to send something out to all of our chapter leaders right there. That's how you do it. Now there's still only the chapter leaders. Um, and that's why it's out in there. So we're just going to leave this on the full list and save preview and send. And then give it one more look over. It's going to refresh your targeting and make sure that you've got everything how you want it. And then it's going to calculate how many people you're sending it to. If it comes back to zero, it means you've done something wrong on the targeting and you've gotten way too narrow. Um, but this email would go to 7,100 people if we actually sent it. Um, we're not going to send it. We're going to cancel it. But then you can either schedule it or you can send the email right there. And if you want to save it, just click Save Draft. And then once you've sent your email, let's go to one that we've used before that's actually gone out so that we can see the statistics on it. Um, let's see. You can get a quick preview right here, or you can just click manage next to the email. Allegedly. Um, and you can just see your stats. You can see how you're doing. If you're getting like 1.24% on subs is just fine. That's not enough to worry about. But if you start getting like upwards of like five, 10% on subs in the email, we need to revisit like where you got your list and if those people have actually opted in. Um, but generally speaking, this is a phenomenal open rate. The average open rate's like 15%. Your average click rate's like 3%. So this was a particularly engaging email because it was like an election update and this is an active list. Um, but if you're doing this for a campaign and you're not seeing like 40% open rates, don't get upset. You'll be fine. Um, but you can see all of that. You can see your clicks. You can see exactly where clicks came from. Um, so you can see like specifically where people found your form, um, which is helpful if you're doing something like a petition and you get, you know, so a couple of blog posts written about it and that sort of thing. This way you can see like specifically where you got results. Um, and you can double check your targets and all of that right here. So those are the two big tools that your average like student is going to need. Um, then there is a little bit more kind of behind the scenes stuff that you may need for um, just overall organizational management. So if you go to start organizing, you've got the option. This is again all of your your stuff that we've already created, like your your actions and emails. Um, but you can also do upload a list directly in there. You just choose your list. So if you have like a, a CSV or a spreadsheet, you can just upload it directly. Um, and then this is where you can then take any new upload and just um, add new upload, read the directions. You can get a sample file if you're not sure if you laid it out right, that'll download like a sample CSV. Um, and then just select your file, make a title, and then you can tag it if you want to tag it as something particular. Um, you can create a tag right here. This part does not break. You don't have to have a tag created to begin with. Um, but if you want to say you had um, a event with um, human rights campaign and y'all joined together for this event and so you have a lot of crossover from your membership, you may want to tag them as HRC people so that you know when you're reaching out to them later, that's how they found your list. Um, and then generally don't overwrite activist data. Don't click any of these because unless you know that the data that you're putting in is absolutely 100% better than the data that's already in the system, don't click overwrite activist data. And you just click upload and match fields and then it'll show you all the titles for each of the columns in your spreadsheet and it'll show you all the custom fields that we have within Action Network. And you just select the appropriate field to map that data, just like if you're uploading it into MailChimp or anything else. Um, I will say if you have custom field data that you want to upload that's not um, like birthday, high school, any of the stuff that we've already created, that's again a field that you're going to want to go to the start organizing and then build those custom fields first um, because otherwise it might get a little wonky when you try to add it on the upload. Um, 
I would advise anything that's going to be like mutable to not be a custom field, but to be a tag. So if it's like chapter leader, make the tag be like 2020 to 21 chapter leader. And if it's a, um, something like a caucus member or something like that, that's all great use of a tag. Um, because then you can sort by that data if you only want to send something to people in that particular that particular caucus or that particular um, criteria. The custom fields data is good if you just need to like manage or like have that data on record. Um, so like what high school somebody goes to kind of could go either way, but like that sort of thing does better as a custom field than a tag. Um, so that's how you upload. If you ever need to just find somebody and update, say that like they don't like the way that their name is displaying on emails and they need to fix their name or something. Um, you can just search them by their email or their name or anything and they'll show up right here. You can just click view and edit record. We can fix my city while we're in here. Um, and then you can see everything this person's done. So you can see that I received this email for voting you can see that I've um, a member of a million high school Democrats groups because that's what I now do with my time. Um, you can see that I once filled out this form to try and make sure that it worked for the HSDA like executive board elections. Um, so you can pretty much see everything that um, somebody has done within the system. If your donations are integrated, you can see that. You can see if they're tagged. You can see anything about them in particular and you can see um any source codes that are relevant and you can add notes here um if you add notes use them appropriately be nice if i find out y'all are using this to bully each other so help me you will lose your privileges um and then if somebody wants to unsubscribe you can unsubscribe them from um just the list right here or you can unsubscribe them from everything um, and you can edit their record right here. So this now gives me basically another form. We're gonna make this Gadsden. Um, and we're good. Save. And now you can see that I live in Etowah County. I live in Alabama's fourth congressional district. You can see what you need to know about me all right here, um, which is super helpful also for like GOTV and stuff. Um, let's see, what else do I need to know about it? Uh, I think that might do it. And then if you ever just need to download um, like a main like data export, um, you just click reports and then you can build your report the same way that you target your emails. So in doing this, it will go ever. Um, choose your email list, High School Democrats of America. You're just going to give your report a name and then you can just segment your data just like you did on the other one. And you can choose the subscription status if you want to see people who have unsubscribed or whatever the case may be. And then save and select data. And when you do that, it will ask you, oh. See, it like doesn't let you mess, mess stuff up too bad. Um, and then it just, this is when you tell it what fields you need to know. So if you need to know like graduation year for everybody that you're exporting, you can just choose that and it'll export that column. Or if somebody like signed up to volunteer and you want to see like, are they an HSDA member? Do they have a chapter at their school? You can just do that, save and get results. And then it'll email you a spreadsheet that has all of that information in it. And you're good to get. Um, how am I doing on time, Milo? Got 20 minutes left. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you all. We can do a couple more of these um, as we go and we can get a little more advanced in some of the tools like ladders and that sort of thing. Um, but for the time being, this pretty much should give you a functioning understanding of how it works um, and get you started. Um, HSDA is paying for this, so HSDA will own the data. HSDA will have um, kind of the ultimate like parent status in this like pyramid of the way that the accounts are created. Um, so this is important that if you 
um, violate the bylaws or like do anything contrary to the values of HSDA using your account, um, you may get your account suspended. So be aware of that, be, use it smart, be appropriate, um, and if you have any questions, you can drop those in the Q&A and we can get them. How did I link the RSVP in the email? Okay, so when we go to our action, you can actually just get, if you want to click on it right here, it'll open it up and then you just copy it. Um, and then when you go into your email, you're going to click, oh, my Q&A box is covered yet. Edit the email, let's see. All you do is select whatever text, and you can do Command K if you're on a Mac. I don't know what a PC does, um, but you can click link, insert link, and paste it right there. And now you have a link. How do you make chat for subaccounts? You don't yet. We're not quite there, um, but we will get you to that as soon as we have kind of everything squared away. When do you get your HSD email? As soon as you all quit asking me the same question 100 times, so I have time to do things besides play catch up. Any other questions? I don't mean to be rude. I get 500 emails a day about when y'all are going to get your emails, literally 500. And I'm so tired because I don't even have time to like get them created because I'm too busy answering emails saying why they haven't been created yet. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Leslie's sitting across the room laughing at me right now. Any other questions? Does this seem like relatively intuitive? Hands up for intuitive. Um, we have six out of 35, that's not a solid number. Um, what about hands up if you were like so completely lost right now, you don't know what we're doing? We have two. So everybody in the middle is like tenuously grasping this or not paying attention. Hands up if you're tenuously grasping this. Twelve. Okay, so we have like 15 people who just aren't paying attention. Cool. Okay. Those will be the same 15 questions that I get 100 times via email tonight, and y'all don't know why I'm mad. Um, okay. Primary things to remember not to do. Do not overwrite data when you upload lists unless you know that the data that you have is absolutely 110% better data than the data that's already in there. Um, do not um, create custom fields within a form or on an email upload. You can create a tag on email upload, but the questions and custom fields you always need to do first. And then um, the last thing not to do is do not send an email without testing it to make sure that your links all work. Um, and then the next last thing to remember to not do is do not abuse your privileges and make sure that you're treating this as an appropriate organizing tool, not a bullying tactic. Um, HSCA does pay for this account and what we pay is dependent on the amount of usage. Um, so that being said, like use it, it's good. Like we want to see that it's being taken care of. But if you're sending like 500 emails a day, um, we're going to have to have a conversation because we get billed for that. So um, use it, use it appropriately, but like don't just like spam people that you don't like. So those are the four and a half things to not do. If we have a spreadsheet with our membership and we've uploaded it into Action Network, if we update the sheet, we'll put that data into Action Network. Um, so no, you'll have to re-upload the spreadsheet because it's not like linking it together. It's just doing a data import. Um, so, but if you, once you have that spreadsheet, don't use a spreadsheet anymore. Use an Action Network form. Um, so if you have like your membership is on a Google form right now, and that's how you collect your membership data, stop using a Google form and create an Action Network form. And then when they submit that form, it automatically puts their data into Action Network. So um, this should take the place of all the Google Forms that exist in the world. Does adding people to the email list or adding our membership data require them to make an account with Action Network? No, it does not. Unless they um, want to be an admin on the account, then they'll need a login and password. But just adding them on the list does not require them to do anything besides have an email address. Um, for using the Action Network and we have a question in the future, yes, you may email me and ask bclayton at hsdems.org. Um, and also, 
if I can direct y'all to, let me see, my screen's like half covered up right now. Um, if you go to start, no, not start organizing, right here. Um, come on, there we go. Um, the training section right here is fantastic. I know that like using internet help guides is like so not cool right now. Um, but they do actual like webinar type trainings that can help you kind of learn how to do this stuff. And um, you can also watch like video tutorials that are pretty good. Like I generally am not somebody that gets much out of these things, but these video tutorials are actually super helpful. And then on the actions for each type of action, there's a help guide under there. You can watch the video tutorial if that's the way you learn best, or you can just click here and it'll take you through um, kind of a step by step on how to do it. So definitely try to use those resources first, but if you have a particular question, um, absolutely reach out to me. But if it's like, how do I send an email, then I'm probably not gonna respond to you. Um, I think you might have answered this, but we're making the custom fields, which field type do we use again? So that's gonna depend on what you're trying to create. Um, when you go, I'll show you all the questions and custom fields. Let me get back. Okay. Um, If I like hover over anything in Zoom that's like also up on the screen, it makes it go away. Um, super frustrating. Okay. So if you want to create, let's say we're going to do like a volunteer, so just add a new question. Field type, you can do a text field. So if it's something like, um, what's the name of your high school? Like that's probably a solid question for a text field, unless there's like 10 high schools in your state. Um, text area is going to be like your long form answer. Um, and so it's like, why do you want to come to Summit? That's a text area question. Um, checkbox group lets people choose more than one. Radio button group lets people choose only one option. And then drop down menu is exactly what it says. That's one of these, it's a drop down menu. Um, so you just choose whichever one's appropriate for what you're asking. And then um, it'll ask for an admin title. This one needs to not have a space in it. I messed up the unique ID thing um, because I did not, I put a space in it when I created it. So whatever your unique, your, whatever your administrative title is, it needs to be no spaces or breaks. So either use an underscore or a period or whatever naming convention you prefer. Um, and then you also then name, see if you hover over this, it just kind of tells you. This is what, when you download the spreadsheet, what it's gonna show up as. So this is just gonna be sample question. And then the label, this is gonna go above the question. So like right here where it says label. Um, that's what this field is. And so this may be like, how do you want to volunteer? And then option label here is what they're going to see. Option value is what you're going to see. Um, and that's not super like critical to remember which is which if you're just making them all say the same thing. But like, you can do something like that where this makes it like an actual full sentence. And then this is just what you remember. Um, I like to, to like when you're doing canvassing, be like, um, boom. because if you put canvas over here, they might not know what you mean. Um, but if you put it this way, I want to knock doors in my neighborhood, that kind of gives people a little bit more clarity about what they're signing up to do. And then when you have it all done, and then you can create a tag that says like volunteer ready or something like that so that you remember this person is somebody who wants to volunteer. Um, and then you just click create question and then that question exists and you can add it to your forms. Um, how do we make sure we're keeping our membership data separate from other contacts? Um, so in terms of other contacts, like other states, you won't have access to their account. So it will all upload directly into you and that's the best place to put it. Um, in terms of other contacts, like if you have multiple Action Network accounts, it always just asks you, like if you have one for like your state party or Young Dems or something else, um, it may, it'll just ask you to choose which list you want to put it on. Does that answer that question for you? Um, any other question? We've got about 10 minutes. 
Do you have any questions? And we can create, um, we can create a uh, list, see where it says send to children. These are all the ones that like we've sent down to you. Um, so your chapter, your account will already have these in it, but the ones that we haven't sent to you don't exist yet. So I can make sure we send more of them if there's one that y'all need that you think, like if there's a field that you think other states also will need, then um, we can create it and just send it to everybody. That way everybody has the same one. Um, okay, How, what about separating membership data from people who are CPU events? So that's a good way to um, use tags. So all of your, all of your contacts are gonna go into, the, into your list. Like you have one big list. Um, but from there, if you want to tag people as like active member, um, then that tag can be removed and added as people like keep their membership active, so to say. Um, and so that way you can only send an email to members if you want to just go to members. But if you want it to go to like, you know, Susan, the 50 year old woman who comes to every young person event because it keeps her youth or something. Um, then she'd be on the big list that you could send that event invite to. Um, so I would just tag all of your, um, and I can create that tag and send it down, but tag all of your active members as members. That way um, you can keep them in their own segmenting. I'm just gonna show you how to create that. That way you'll see it there more quick. So we're gonna add this to high school dems. And then add a new tag. And just create a tag. It's like the easiest thing to do in this whole thing. And now I'm going to send it to y'all. That way you have it. And now it should be there. Well, see. Any other questions on this? Going once. How do we give someone a tag? So once you've created the tag, um, there are two ways to tag somebody. So you can go to start organizing right here and search for activist and then choose, let's see, let's tag, let's pick on these two. Um, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to move all these things down. All right. View an edit record right here. And then, so you'll see right here, no, there's no tags. But if you go right here to edit, now you can change the things in, in his record. And just click right here to add tags. Active. And you're good to go right there. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of custom data here too, because that's a good example of somebody. Um, and there you go. And you can add a tag that way. If you also want to add like a big list of people, say you've got like a spreadsheet from your county party and they're all people who are just like super interested in being involved and knowing what you're up to and like meddling in your business. When you go to upload it, um, just choose your list. And then when you click add new upload, it'll let you select a tag and then apply that tag to everybody who gets uploaded right there. So everybody on that list will automatically get it. And then if you need to like bulk untag people, um, you can also do it that way. Um, you can, I think how to actually untag them. I think I have to do that with a report, but we can get to that if you need to actually bulk untag people, you can email me about that one. But you can browse the file, whatever your list is, title it, and then just choose your tag and your out the door. Okay. Any other questions? Awesome. We've got about five minutes left, so I guess we can wrap up. I'm going to find a phone charger, and we will see you all at the next thing at 530.
Oh, wait, I see one more question. Where will this recording be? I don't know. Ask Milo. He's in charge of everything. Despite how it looks, I'm not actually in charge of any of this. I just show up and talk. Milo, do you know where this recording is going to be? Milo. Did we lose Milo? Did we lose everybody? Am I the only one here? It's terrifying. I'm here. Um, it'll be on the YouTube eventually sometime when my phone will let me upload them. I should have put makeup on for this time. Um, awesome. Thanks. All right. Well, if that's everything, um, bclayton at hsstems.org. Um, and you can reach me there. Um, Emily's asking, will there be a membership form made on the national level? Um, the way that we will probably do it is have a membership form for each state. And then from there, that all flows up so that if you're a member of your state, then you're a member of national. Um, because data will flow from states up to national anyway. So um, it'll probably be where you sign up with your state. That way there's not like two separate lists floating around about like who thinks they're a member of what. Because there have been problems in the past where people think they're a member of HSDA because they're a member of their chapter, but their chapter doesn't coordinate with their state and their state doesn't coordinate the nationals and now nobody knows who's actually a member. So we're going to put it all through the state level. All right, so this will be up on YouTube. And if y'all need anything, don't hesitate to reach out as long as you have first checked the help guides.